Welcome back to Politics Today 2023 and the general elections are still our focus. My next guest is the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party's uh, Prince Adewale Adebayo. Welcome to Politics Today. Adewale Adebayo, thank you. I think we should begin with this, um, by getting your reaction to the division within your party over the statement from um, the man who says he's the National Publicity Secretary, but then there are reactions to that saying that he is not. He says that your party uh, would not, he would not be surprised if your party aligned with the APC. What's your reaction to that? Well, he's an imposter. We don't know him. Uh, you know, he's not a member of our party. He might have been a member of our party maybe 10 years ago. I don't know. Maybe eight years ago. I don't know. But I'm the presidential candidate of the party. I know everyone in the party. For the life of me, I don't know this person. Maybe it's a pseudonym, maybe it's anything, I don't know. So it could be anyone. It could be talking from Afghanistan. It could be anybody. So I hope someone can find him, you know, at least identify who he is. But, but I suspect that it's um, part of, I don't know why they are fixated with SDP. She just let us be. If you want, if you're confident, just go and run but, the but then, you know, you know, they say there is no smoke without fire. I think a couple of days, maybe a week ago, you had said that um, you had no links with Tinubu. You would never want to uh, align yourself with him. And then a few days later, this is what we hear. So... I tend to respond to journalists when they ask me questions. I was at a bell cutter, doing my legitimate business leader of my party. And the press came to me and said that they heard something. And usually it's not my style to talk about the competition. I rather focus on the problems of the country and our solution. And since our politics is not the same old, same old politics, we are ordinary citizens responding to the challenges of the day. So I don't have any history with them. I don't have any competition with them. All I know is that we believe that in this country, at this time, Let's have a break. You know, that's our idea. But, so well, each time we come out, someone will mention someone. So we, I have to say, look, it will never happen. To that one, you can be sure. It I, will not happen. So thinking that... Is it an APC thing, or are you saying that uh, the SDP will not form an alliance going into the elections? What are we... We could form... We were talking about alliance with new people. I cannot form alliance with those who spend seven and a half years and we have ASU strike. I cannot form an alliance with people who are jeopardizing our lives and making a lot of money out of it. I cannot form alliance with people who are allowing 80% of our natural resource, crude oil, being stolen, and they can stop it today if they want to, but they will not. So I cannot allow an alliance with people who have made it difficult for you to even earn a decent living. Inflation is eating your money. Unemployment is making people to, to be almost suicidal. Inflation is eating your money. Foreign exchange instability. So what am I aligned? It's not about power. It's not about just finding yourself in some government office. It's about doing work. And they've been given seven and a half years. They can't do it. So how can you also ally, ally with uh, PDP? Whatever problem we are facing with APC today was caused by the failure of the PDP. It was PDP put people in such a desperate position that they would take anyone at that time. And that's how this, this party came into power. So it's not about, I, I don't want to focus on them, but I, I just have to respond honestly to the in inquiry being made. And, they have a way of throwing these things out, out there. You know, they have a way of saying, yeah, they are doing well, we like them, we're going to come together. It's not going to happen. So no APC, no PDP? No way. How about the Labour Party? It's PDP. The Labour Party is PDP. It's PDP. I mean, you were just mentioning the question when we were speaking to Governor Lamido just now, that if they had kept him, maybe they had added one or two carrots, probably would have stayed. Just the same way, if, if Wiki, for example, with due respect, if Governor Wiki decides to to go out of PDP today, does it make many things? These are PDP people. The same problem of ASU strike that you're talking about happened under APC, happened under PDP. The same strike happened under Labour. 
uh, the man who was in labor now when he was governor in his state. I'm not, I don't hate any one of them. I, I, I find them quite nice guys from when I interact with them. But there's no ideological alliance. There's nothing for the benefit of the people can make anyone to go and work with them. But if you are working for yourself, looking for how to place yourself in some position, and you are in politics for self-accommodation, then you can find something. But if you want to tie roads, educate children, safeguard the country, uh, discipline the military, keep defense spending in, in, in appropriate order, grow the welfare of the people, spend money on social spending, the way they are bankrupting the country with expensive elections, they will spend three and a half years just trying to recover their election expenses. So it cannot happen. I'd rather win the election, serve the people, or go back to law practice, and all that is I'm doing. And you believe you would win. Um, I recall that you had said that the third force will win. You said the SDP was the third force. Yes. It would seem that if even the PDP and the APC believe that the third force in this case is the Labour Party. Now, while they say that, the concern now would be, does the SDP, considering the permutations so far in the polity, still believe that it has the numbers to compete as a third force and win this thing? We do have the numbers. If you are looking at Nigerians, now, and I understand why they are, you know, there is the politics of the establishment. Unfortunately, the Labour brand, uh, they are my friends, and I'm heartbroken, but this gentlemen I and mean, ladies who have worked hard over the years in the labor movement have finally been hoodwinked and they've joined the other side. Well, time will tell, you know, that people make mistakes all the time. But what I'm saying to you is that the reason why they are spending their time is that they are the same people, same source of income, same experience, same behavior. So it's still part of all of that. But the thought, the thought for us is the people of Nigeria, those who have not been in government before, who don't have a track record of what we are complaining about. Let me tell you how I know the establishment. If the things we are complaining about in the country and the dilemma that we are trying to resolve originated from your past practices, I will categorize you, irrespective of whatever label you are using now, as part of the problem. Now, I'm not saying people are not forgivable. There is a place in the heart of God for sinners who repent. There's a place in the heart of God for people who apologize for past deeds. But the God himself cannot help hypocrites. People who are part of the problem, but they are mouthing the problem that they are part of as if they are not part of it. Why is that? Because there is no room for you to say, okay, you are changing. You're not changing because they know that in election season, they have polling people, posters who poll for them. Whatever issue is popular, they come out and talk about it. The same thing they did with APC in 2015 with all the oil money being stolen, the argument between Governor of Central Bank and the then Minister of Finance over 20 billion, 20 something billion oil money not, not remitted and all of the other corruptions. So they came up together and said, okay, People don't like corruption. So let's come out and run on the mantra of corruption. So this is just polling. And they came out. They themselves were more corrupt than the people they were talking about. But since it's a popul popular subject, they are running on it. Same thing is happening. So our job as leaders of the third force is to tell our people to be disciplined, to study the issue, study people's background, study their character. If someone says, I am going to do this, you ask them that you had an opportunity for eight years somewhere to do it. You haven't done it. If you say, why should students suffer and stay at home when the country has money to educate them? People will ask, but when you were governor, there was a lot of strike in your state lasting 11 months. And Prince, things like that. Those are Prince critical Adibaya. questions that you talk about. Let me take you up on something you said yesterday at the NBA conference. Yes. You said that politicians should stop stealing. If you become president, how do you intend to stop the stealing of public funds? It's very easy. First, you start with what I'm doing now. Run a lean campaign of volunteers. Don't waste money. Don't attract money to your campaign. Many people, even who are close to me, sometimes question me, why are you not doing this, doing that? Because all these things that you're doing cost money. And when someone comes to you, I've had people come to me, 
and I've not mentioned their name to, I don't want to embarrass anyone. Someone comes to you and says, oh, I want to put 500 million in your campaign. I always ask them, for what? What's the maximum INEC allows you to spend? And why are you doing this? So, but I welcome volunteers who do this. So you start with that. So when you are going to Eagle Square, you're not going as a debtor who has old people money. On, uh, on May 29, 2015, the president had to come out and say, I belong to everybody, I belong to nobody. Why? Because he looked at the list of all the people he owed obligations. It was mind boggling. And if you look at it now, they are starting that again. So well, that's the first thing you do. Then you come to government on the strength of popularity with the people. Then you have the freedom to now select the best of Nigerians, home and abroad, whom you know for the life of you that they don't need government money, they don't have degree, they may not be necessarily rich. It doesn't mean that wealthy people cannot be thieves. So in many occasions they are. It doesn't also mean that a person who is of modest income cannot be honest. In many cases, they are honest, so it, it, it doesn't follow. But you know people who bleed, who, whose heart bleeds for the country, who just want to be proud citizens of Nigeria, who are proud to be broke in a rich government. Not people who want to be rich in a broke government. That's what I'm saying, and I, I keep giving an example. Last month, I was with my friend, Tom Perez, who has served in the Justice Department as a Deputy Attorney General, served as uh, Secretary of Labor for President Obama, served in many capacity. He was telling me he was to run for an election. He had no money. Honest politicians worldwide don't have money. But the government has enough money for social welfare. That is how. But if you do this mercantile system where people donate offices, hundreds of cars, it's like an investment. They're coming back to take their money. So this is what I will do, number one, because once the thief is not able to be in any sensitive position in government. It is difficult to steal government money from outside. It is extremely difficult for armed robbers to break into the central bank fault. They will need to come like an army, and after 10 hours, they haven't stolen anything. But if the governor of the central bank himself, or somebody who's a deputy governor or a director, actually can use a pen to rob the country blind, then what are you talking about? So that is the gateway. Amin Kano, my leader, said it that the moment you allow thieves to enter government, bye-bye to peace and prosperity. And that's or, what we need to deal with. But our politics, with all these shiny lights and all of these expensive things, life coverage that costs millions and all of these expensive things, you should know that this is not reflective of this anemic state of the economy. It's not reflective of the life of the people. People in whom the government has not invested 10,000 in four years get to be given 100,000. Bicycle, motorcycle, what's all that for? So this is what we need to put an end to, and that's Prince the beginning Sir, of solving that problem. Prince Adebo, just before we go, in trying to improve our elections, the House of Representatives is considering, or National Assembly, but the House had a hearing today to consider a bill to establish the Electoral Offences Commission. And the INEC chairman was there and urged the House to pass that bill, urged the National Assembly to pass that bill. What are your concerns, or what do you think are some of the inputs that could go into that bill? to ensure that offenders or electoral offenses are dropped to the barest minimum? In 2006, I wrote a complete head-to-toe Electoral Offenses Commission Act, a bill, which I gave to INEC at that time. Perhaps Professor Ewu or people were there at that time. I gave it to them. You, first and foremost, let me just say one thing. It is impossible to commit an electoral offense without committing an already existing criminal offense. So whether you give money to somebody, that's bribery. Whether you intimidate somebody, that's assault or battery. Whether you forge a form ECA, that's already forgery in our law. So if we had the political will, we could actually prosecute people now. There are people who, let me give you a graphic example. Quickly, please. I've done over hundreds of election petition. There are people in whose name crimes were committed and judicially noticed. There are judgments. If you take all the judgments since 1999 today of election tribunal, there are people who were said to have forged the document, for that document. So if you want to prosecute them, you can prosecute them. But if you create a commission, and we as Social Democratic Party are in government, 
Then we can put people there who are actually not going to use it for politics, who are going to use it ethically to cleanse the system. It is the kind of government you elect. It's an irony because to solve electoral offenses problem, you still have to have a clean election before so that you can have a clean government that will set, institute a clean commission that will do a clean job. So Prince. that is the problem of chicken and egg in our struggle for ethical governance in Nigeria. Prince Adewale Adebayo, thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's politics today. Many thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.